Welcome back again, everybody. And we're doing another trailer analysis video. I know this is all I've done in the last couple of weeks. When you're watching this, I'm actually gonna be out of town and I filmed all of these videos within the space of a couple of days to just get back in the swing of making content. And I'm really pleased to be doing that. It feels really good to do that. Uh, so when I return in January, I will be working on all types of content that I had planned, uh, you know, before I got really busy and hopefully I don't get too busy with work again, but you can never be uh, sure because at the end of the day, uh, my, my real job is what takes precedence and also, you know, obviously uh, supporting my family, etc. So uh, I will do my very best. And otherwise, let's take a look at Ayudin Chronicle 100 Heroes, which is a spiritual successor uh, to Sekoden, and I know I'll get some grief in the comments because I think some people say uh, Suikoden or something like that. Um, I, I've played this game or Sekoden games since I was a very young child, and I've just said Sekoden my entire life. And if that is the incorrect pronunciation, then I very much apologize for that. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead, and when I say, when I reference Sekoden in this video, you'll just know that I'm talking about what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the key features trailer and it has a ton of information in it. It is about six minutes long, but it basically confirms a lot of things that you might assume about Ayudin Chronicle in that it has a ton of features from Sekoden, but also has a just ton of really cool features in general. So one of the first things that we notice here are these mix of 3D and 2D backgrounds. And man, does it all look really good. It's not quite like HD 2D, which is fine. It doesn't need to be. I think it is its own thing and it looks really good. It's telling us about their three main characters that you play as. Uh, but of course, you can recruit over 100 heroes and some of those will be combat heroes and some of them will be shopkeepers and other NPCs that will be part of your castle town, which is a very, very uh, cool feature that is returning from the Sakodan series. So in this trailer, they kind of mix in uh, introducing different characters with some really cool uh, voice acting, some cool music animations that they are kind of just uh, sharing uh, so we can see. The, the battlefield always looks really dynamic in this game. I know there are actual battles where what slot you put your character in makes a really big difference because you can have uh, six characters in battle. So you have to put three in the front row, three in the back row, just like in the original uh, two, uh, one and two Sakodan games. Uh, and well, and, and three, but then it kind of uh, moved away in four. So otherwise we see this kind of, this looks like to me, your world map. Now it might, it might not be kind of like shown like a world map, uh, but it just, it's, it's going to be, you know, a, as good as, uh, you know, there seems to be a political uh, intrigue storyline going on, which is of course always a big part of the Sakodan games and is going to be no different in uh, Ayudin Chronicle. So some other things that we can kind of mention in here, if we kind of skip ahead, uh, there's going to be, like I said, uh, a castle system. So this is a castle that as you recruit people, the town will be repaired we will get all these different shopkeepers and people that you know the, the inventor of the elevator in Sakoden that you got in the first game whatever it was the hot spring operator and as you do that the castle town will be fixed up it will become more and more vibrant there'll be mini games uh, there'll be shops and people that you can go see uh, and that is all really cool to see now this is a really cool looking tr card game there's like this racing mini game uh, lots to do in the castle town and this was one of my favorite parts of the Sakodan Suk series and I'm so glad to see it returning because you do see this in other games but not really in the same uh, you know scale at least in my opinion unless it's a game that's specifically a, a, a like a you know town builder but even then like I'm thinking of games that I really enjoyed with that style and it was things like Dark Cloud that had like that kind of dynamic town system although of course you're gonna be able to recommend me some other games uh, a lot of you but let's go back because I just skipped to the very end to talk about that but there's also the return of a really really interesting system because in in Sakodin what was always very interesting was that you had your regular combat, your six party members, and it was very, you know, standard JRPG. But 
or just RPG in general. We don't have to put a JRPG lo label on that. But was, what was also cool about Sakodan is that it had duels, which were one-on-one -on -one kind of rock, paper, scissors. Uh, you know, they were just, they were, they weren't as much about the challenge. It was just a very cinematic way to have a one-on-one -on -one fight that wasn't the regular battle system. But what they also had uh, were wars. And in the original game, the wars were very, very simple, uh, but they got more and more complex as the iterations of the of the games came out. And the the sea battles in Sakodan 4 were some of my favorite, actually, uh, although I really enjoyed Sakodan 3 as well. Uh, but this is really cool. This is like total war scale. Now, uh, of course, this is like where the game maybe doesn't look the absolute best, but I'm not really that worried about it because that's really not why I'm I'm like into this mode. It's about that they have this grid based tactic system and then you see this full scale here of your cavalry, your uh, what looks like mages behind that. So whoever's in the different formations for the war battles is going to affect what it actually looks like. And we can see uh, just some really cool animations uh, that play out uh, once they actually start like marching towards each other. There's always really good voice lines. Maybe if you p uh, pit specific characters against specific enemies, you will actually like see extra voice lines, which is always really satisfying. And then here we go. So here's the actual battle happening and we can watch it play out. Uh, and you can actually see there's a uh, text on the right side there that is summarizing all of the action and we can see a little map with the grid of what's actually happening uh, on the larger scale. Uh, so really cool, there's a morale boost and there's a rage mode meter on the bottom as well, as well as objectives that we can see. Okay, so moving on to combat. And so like I said, there is six uh, party members in your party, or there are six party members. But what I wanted to point out here is kind of where they're situated. Now, first of all, combat is where this game, I think, looks the best we can see there's kind of like a turn order up in the top middle of the screen and i believe that you input your actions and then see everything go and so that would be like your agility system of how everything actually plays out but what we also see here is that on the top the back right and the back left is that those characters are actually on a higher level than the other characters now whether that actually plays out uh, in this battle in a meaningfully way, meaningful way, I don't actually know, but that is something that's common in these different fight scenes that we'll see and that we've talked about. Uh, and it's really cool that there could be implications uh, for how that actually works out. So we see there's also um, going to be just a ton of different magic, regular attacks. There's these shark uh, kind of humanoid people that are freaking hilarious and I love them. Uh, although the, the voice acting is is like a little bit excitable for me. Uh, there's there's just always so many like very unique characters in Sakodin. And of course we have the combo system where two characters or more that really know each other well, they have some kind of bond uh, in the game or they form one throughout the game, will be able to use special combos together. And these are really, really cool. So I believe that these actually use a, a specific um, actual, like an like a MP or something. Uh, but otherwise, like they're gonna just show off a bunch of different ones here. I always loved finding out all the combos, uh, what you could do. There's always, it's like a lot of fun when you find out if there's like a, like a six person combo where your entire party needs to be set up with. And there is even the return mechanic for from Sakodin 3 of having one of your party members be a mount for a different one because you can get a dragon. We can see it right here in the top right uh, where one of it's the dragon ride combo. But I, I so I guess that doesn't confirm if you're riding it in combat, but that's how it would work in uh, Sakodin 3. So here's an example of where you have your six character slots and basically the left side and right side of the six slots are protected naturally by rubble, but the ones in the middle are not. And you can see that the two characters in the middle are using the guard command. And the reason they're doing that is because they're gonna get hit directly by this attack. And so they're trying to reduce the amount of damage. So we can see zero, zero all the way across the, the sides, but the middle was 11 and nine. So not a huge deal because of the guard, uh, but you know, you very specifically have to be careful, um, you know, with what you're doing, depending on the actual boss fight. So something else that's pretty cool about this, this combat, 
uh, is that you have these different rows. So you have a front row and a back row. Now we don't know if it's going to be like the classic Sakodan games where there's short characters that can only go front row, long characters that can only go back row, and medium characters that can be flexible and go in either. I would personally like to see a return to that because while it is limiting using certain characters, it does give certain characters thematically, you know, a cool, um, uh, you know, niche in where they operate. And because there's so many characters, I like to think that there's reasons to use certain ones over others. Uh, and that kind of adds to that experience for me. Okay. So to summarize, this game is looking awesome. It's basically hitting on all the nostalgia factors. Now, somebody might correct me out here, but as of yet, I haven't seen a duel system, but I very much hope that there are one-on-one -on -one duels in this game as well, uh, which is something I really enjoyed from Sakodin. And I think that the success of this Kickstarter uh, campaign and just the amount of hype building for the game, which is coming out at the end of March next year, by the way, is it's no surprise that Konami has actually announced that they're doing, uh, you know, the HD remaster of Sakodin's one and two, uh, which I literally might even be, I might even be more hyped for than this. Although I, oh man, I can, you know, you can't pick. There's too many good games coming out. But either way, uh, I'm very excited for this. Uh, I will definitely be covering more uh, information once it releases. And as always, I'm hoping that in the future that I can be a little bit more timely with that, those videos and that information uh, so that I hit it when it's still new in the news cycle. But uh, either way, I just appreciate you coming by and watching this video. Uh, and hopefully I'll catch you all soon in another one. And otherwise, have a wonderful new year and uh, we'll see you all soon.